Yeah, so um, I've been a I mean, sports athlete my whole entire life since I was five years old. I had two older brothers, so I really didn't have a choice. You know, it was just since I was could walk, I wanted to play football. And uh, to kind of fast forward a little bit, uh, I went to move to Texas, and uh, Texas, of course, is football state. And I got a scholarship at Baylor University. Um, stood out there, and I thought I would get drafted. I was supposed to go fourth round to late round. That didn't happen, and uh, I ended up signing a a free agent deal with Indianapolis Colts, which I had a great preseason. Uh, everything was going good, but uh, they cut me and put me on practice squad. And that was pretty much my like my downward spiral because, you know, my dreams are right there. I thought everything was going to happen for me and it didn't. And so I would probably got cut eight or nine times throughout my three year career in the NFL with three different teams. Yeah, for sure. So I was in an on and off again relationship at the time uh, when I was playing with Indianapolis Colts and I actually spent some time here in New York City. It's funny, like this was a place that is a good place for me, but at the same time brings a lot of memories that uh, that was kind of my downward spiral. But I wasn't being a faithful person and I ended up getting my now wife actually, but pregnant at the time. And so it was tough because, I mean, when something happens, it's not planned. You know, I was looking at the pregnancy as a disappointment. So I finally have to face my reality. My my career is not going right, and this is a big thing. Our our parents are our best friends, so it was a big mess. And um, to fast forward, though, it was the greatest rescue of my life. I mean, my son Tristan was the reason why I wanted to be a better man because I knew he would follow my footsteps. So it was 2009. Uh, I just got released from the Seahawks in 2008. So beginning of 2009, I was at home in the off season. And I wish I had like a cool moment story to tell you, but I just remember being in my mom's house in my room and looking around like, dang, like, like work my life. Like, what am I doing with myself? I've seen all these trophies and pictures and my son in the room. And I just broke down and cried. I'm a man of faith. And I just prayed and said, man, I just want my life to be used for something better. And I just told myself it's rehab time. And so for me, rehab time wasn't to start an organization. It wasn't to be a speaker. Literally, that was my biggest fear. It was me rehabbing my life, mind, body, and soul. So reading books, which I, it's funny, I'm writing books, but I hated to read at that time. It was me going to the gym. It was me diving deeper in my spirituality. And in that process of me sharing the journey with people, you know, people started to ask me questions. So I would make these two minute videos with my iPhone and upload them. And that's started what uh, people know today as rehab time. Yeah, it's important because forgiveness is hard. I mean, especially when someone's hurt you, I mean, for me, it was football. You know, people think that's funny, but it was football. Like, it was hard for me to forget. I can't even watch football. But I realized, like, when you don't forgive, you carry an emotional weight around you for the rest of your life. And I always tell people, if someone did you wrong, the worst thing you could do is give them the power to control your future when they controlled your past. So forgiveness is not for other people. Forgiveness is not a weakness. It's a strength. Forgiveness literally is for you. It frees you from that situation. So the question I would ask somebody watching is like, do you want to live with this pain the rest of your life? Because without forgiveness, you can move on from the person or situation, but you will never move on from the pain.